We can't imagine RVing without a barbecue grill on board. The problem is, most small barbecue grills are set up to use small propane tanks. And we figured, why should we have to haul these tanks around and risk running out of propane while we're in the middle of cooking dinner when we've got a giant tank full of propane on board already? Now our motorhome didn't come from the factory with any way to connect the grill into the system. So one of the first things we did was to modify it so that we could. Today, we'll show you how we did that. We're over here on the driver's side of the RV. Our tank happens to be located behind the front wheel, a long distance away from where we want our barbecue grill. Now, this setup right here has been added into the system. So it used to be the propane came out of the tank, went straight across to the regulator here, and up into the main line feeding all the appliances inside the motorhome. What we've done is we've added in this T right here, which is called a stay a while or an extend a stay. And what that does is allow us to do two things. It feeds a T off to other items like the barbecue grill, which is where this goes up and over to the other side, and also allows us to connect right here from a large external propane tank. If you saw our video about RVing in the winter and connecting to external propane, this connection right here is what allowed us to hook up to an extremely large tank and not have to use up our propane on board so quickly. Now this T here has a regulator in it right here. This is a 15 PSI regulator to prevent there from being full high pressure going to the other side of the RV. The reason we had to do that is because high pressure propane going over a long run will create an oily buildup inside the hose. Now, originally, we didn't have this regulator here at all, and we simply had the hose connected right into the extend stay A few years ago, our grill stopped working properly, and we took the regulator off it and found that it was full of oil. A little research determined that it's that high pressure going all the way across to the other side that created that problem. And the answer to that is to regulate before the long run of hose. So we added this 15 PSI regulator in right here. And what that does is it drops the pressure in the hose enough to prevent it from getting that oily buildup, but still leaves it pressurized enough to get the propane all the way to the grill. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, if we were going to do that, why didn't we just tee into the line on the downstream side of the regulator over here where we've already got it cut back? The reason for that is simple. If we were to do that, when we hooked up to an external propane tank right here, we'd be putting high pressure propane onto the downstream side of the regulator up into the RV, which you can't do. The pressure in the RV has to be regulated. It can't be full pressure. And that meant that connecting to a large external propane tank had to be done on this side of the regulator, not this side. That left us with this solution, just putting this little regulator here, and that has solved the problem for us. Up here, what we've got is a 24 foot length of hose. It's actually two 12 foot lengths of hose. So now let's go over to the other side into the basement and show you the other side of this hose and what pieces we have over there. This is where the high pressure hose comes through the wall into the basement. You can see we've used a lot of silicone on here to seal it. It's been this way for over 11 years. We've never had any problem. It's still tightly sealed. To allow us to keep all the basement doors closed while the grill is connected, we used a hole saw to drill through this section down underneath the slide out. Then we put in a protective sleeve, the type you might use to protect computer wires going down through a desktop. What we've done here is added a fitting that goes into a quick connect. And over on the other side is the other side of the quick connect permanently attached to the grill. So all we have to do every time we want to hook up the grill is take the protective cap out. And now our grill's hooked up. And it's just that easy to disconnect as well. 
We'll put links to all these pieces in the video description down below in case you want to replicate this. Your system may be a little different, but it's pretty straightforward because all these parts only go together one way. All this talk about barbecuing is making me hungry. We're replacing the bulb in every single Let one all of the water drain components. out of the tank. While Atwood aluminum tanks don't require anode rods, suburban owners should expect their anode to look something like this, pitted and worn, as compared to a brand new rod. Before we do any flushing, let's take a look inside the tank with our boroscope. The upgrade has really increased light output. Going from our old what we're seeing is lime scale fragments that have fallen. Here's a look at the heating element, with plenty of lime scale deposits still clinging to.